Sir Gilbert Walker, a British physicist from the early 20th century, was studying the monsoon in India when he noticed an interesting oscillation, almost a teeter-tottering pattern in the surface air pressure across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. What he was observing was the periodic weakening and strengthening of the pressure systems that controlled the strength of the trade winds along the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Let's draw together the atmospheric circulation that Sir Gilbert Walker saw when things were normal across the Pacific Ocean. Here we have a stretch of open Pacific Ocean between South America and Australia. When things are normal, high pressure resides near South America and low pressure builds near Australia. Due to the pressure distribution, the trade winds flow from the east to the west between these two pressure centers. Once these winds converge near Australia, they rise in the presence of the low pressure region and create clouds of precipitation. As this air rises, it eventually hits the tropopause where it is forced to spread out horizontally. As the air flows back across the Pacific towards South America, it will descend above the high pressure center and complete the loop. This vertical circulation in the atmosphere was named the Walker cell, or Walker circulation, after Sir Gilbert Walker. Notice again that over Australia and Indonesia, there is typically a lot of precipitation, while over Peru and South America, it is typically dry. Now, as a direct consequence of the direction the surface winds travel across the Pacific, the surface water is transported in that direction too. As the water is pushed from the east to the west, it too creates a vertical circulation like you see here. Warm water is pushed toward Australia, where it is forced to sink down deep into the ocean. As the circulation continues, the cold nutrient-rich water is brought up to the surface near South America. When cold water is forced to rise like this, we call it upwelling. And when warm water is forced to sink, we call it downwelling. What is interesting about the circulation is that all the warm surface water is blown to the west. As a consequence, the warm water actually piles up near Australia and expands due to the water's high temperature. This makes sea level several inches higher on this side of the Pacific Ocean. So now that we've seen what the ocean and atmospheric circulations look like when things are normal across the Pacific Ocean, let's look at what happens when an El Nino event takes place. First, the trade winds slacken as the high pressure near Peru and the low pressure near Australia weaken in strength. During strong El Ninos, these winds can even stop or actually reverse direction. As the winds slow, the walker cell weakens, and the warm waters that have piled up in the west slowly begin to slosh back east. While this may not seem substantial, we are redistributing pressure, heat, and precipitation across 10,000 miles of open ocean, which is approximately one-third of the way around the world. This change sets off a ripple effect in the atmosphere that can change the weather worldwide.